there, Sean Terry here, and I am pumped for this interview because this man has flipped a property and made millions to the tune of how much? Uh, 4.6, really 4. 5.2 if you want to be accurate. Okay, $4.2 million flip. So uh, he is, I know, it's totally, totally excited. He's actually here in Phoenix, Arizona, local to, uh, to my market here. Known him for a while, and uh, he has transformed from rehabber to wholesaler to wholesaler to rehabber to now doing bigger deals. So, Corey, let's kind of get into it. Um, how you doing today, bud? Man, I'm doing awesome. <laughs> the you weather's look, finally changing like in Arizona. Four point two million dollar relaxed man. How's it going? <laughs> Dude, life's good, man. <laughs> Life is really good right now. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. Okay, so um, so g give us your now. I mean, four point two million dollars is a lot of money. Obviously, it was a bigger project. It wasn't a house that you bought for two hundred fifty thousand and sold for you know you know four point six million or whatever. It was it was essentially right. it's, it's a bigger deal. But um, where where did you come from? What was your what was your background in real estate, and what brought you, you know, to the point of inflection? I guess you could say. Yeah. So I mean, I, I grew up as just a small town country boy. I grew up in West Plains, Missouri, which is like a dot on the map. Um, I was probably not voted most likely to succeed, mm -hmm. um, and I barely met out of high school. So um, I basically, you know, when you don't have a degree, you got to own some stuff, sell some stuff. I sold lots of things. And then I read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, mm -hmm. and that book changed my life, and it put me on the path of real estate. Right. And um, I didn't have a whole lot of money, and I didn't have lots of um, credit, so I, I jumped into the wholesale business, and I got really good at it. I would go to our local RIAs and sit next to all the guys that were doing lots of deals, yep. and I was basically an order taker. I would just you know start with my pen, and where do you like to buy at, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was basically a hustler. I had to hustle for everything I got, Sean. Yep. And then something changed. I learned how to raise private money. I was, I was wholesaling. I got really good that I knew there were deals, mm -hmm. right? There were deals out there, but I wanted to make the big money. And I was only making a small wholesale fee at the time. Right. And I thought raising capital would be the solution. And I raised my first money totally by accident. So, but what was and, that? What was that transition, though? Because I mean, because you know, you're talking to a wholesaler, you're talking to uh, you know, or, you know, people watching that are primarily wholesalers, right? And you know, what was that epiphany that you said? Okay, I mean, because for a wholesale, so a wholesale transaction, eighteen, twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars. I mean, that that's a pretty good chunk of change if you compare yeah. that to the average American and their annual income. But what was that change? Yeah. You said, okay, what did you get sick of something? You didn't. You something you was irritating. You didn't well, what, like about the wholesaling yeah. you wanted to transfer. What was it? Well, when I was wholesaling, I only learned how to do REOs and short sales. So I was making like three or four thousand dollars per year. Okay. <laughs> not 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 what not what I do now. Like I understand wholesaling now in a whole different way. Yeah. But when I started, all I knew how to do was go on the MLS and find deals. I wasn't even a realtor. I had to borrow someone else's username and password to get on the MLS. <laughs> and I, I mean, I'm just like hustling, like hustle. the hustle, hustle right. to make three or 4,000 bucks. And I was just like hustling, grinding. And I, I never figured out, I didn't know how to market like, you know, like you teach my gosh, if I would have known that it'd been crazy. But I got to the point where I was doing, um, all these little deals. And I was like, man, if I could get some more money, I think I could do better. Mm -hmm. And um, this was in 09, 0, 010. And I raised my first piece of private money by accident. I was just asking the guy for help. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, I learned some really choice nuggets on how to raise private money. And because of that, I've raised, I started raising millions and millions of dollars in private money, OPM, mm -hmm. from just mom and dad, pop, mom and mom and pop shops, right? Mm -hmm. That just gave me their money. And I was doing really, real, really well in the valley until our market started to slow down and decrease. Right. And when, in 2011, it was harder to find short sales in REOs. Right. And I didn't know how to do marketing. Right. And so I'm like the path of least resistance. And honestly, at that point in time, I was getting really frustrated, Sean, because I thought I was making money, but I'm not sure if I was. Because mm -hmm. all I felt like I did was manage subcontractors and cut checks. Right. Cut checks, cut checks, cut checks, cut checks. 
And I mean, and I was starting to become miserable. I was running around, chasing everybody, chasing all my, I was like a parts runner, right? I had to go to Lowe's and drop off parts to all my projects. And next thing I know, I'm missing my kids' games. And, I, you know, I'm becoming a horrible father. I felt horrible. Yeah. And um, it was at that point in time, I call it I'm kind of a low point. In, in the eyes of people, I looked very successful, Sean. Yeah. I looked very successful. But inside, I was a train wreck. Right. And I drove by an apartment complex, and I used to ask myself, how can I own an apartment complex? Or I, I wish I could own an apartment complex. Mm -hmm. It was just a wish. Right. And one day I said, how can I? And that was the difference. I, I asked myself, how could I? And my, my brain went into motion, and it started solving the problem. Hmm. Yeah, and Tony, Tony Robbins. Out. Yeah, Tony Robbins says that if you ask the right questions, you'll get the right answers. So instead yeah. of I wish, you're like, how could I? Next thing you know, private money comes. You put it to two and two together. That's awesome. So um, yeah. at the yeah. event, obviously you're going to be speaking at the event. I'm really excited about that. So one thing, could you speak on on a segment on raising capital? Oh man, that's to me. It's the money is in the money, Sean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Forget about anything else. If you have lots of money, you can figure out how to put yourself in deals, in um, in cash flowing situations. Because mm -hmm. I used to love the fix and flip profits. I I absolutely love. I mean, I love cash flow. Mm -hmm. It's the most sexy thing out there. Right. Cash flow is sexy. Cash flow yes. is sexy. <laughs> <laughs> but raising capital is what it's all about. If you can raise money, private money, it opens up the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so uh, g give us like a, uh, 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 like a 50,000 foot view of this $4.2 million flip. Now, okay. I know you're going to go so, into details and stuff like that at the event, kind of explain every, all the step by step, but give us like a 50,000. Yeah. So I, I was. I knew I had lots of private money behind me. It wasn't my money, but it was money that I could place. And I went to a, a place where there was a bunch of guys that had potential multifamily deals. Mm -hmm. And I just stood up and said, "Hey, I got lots of money. Is there any deals out there?" Mm -hmm. And you know, the rest of the week I didn't pay for any lunches or dinners because everybody's pitching me their deal. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to negotiate a really good um, opportunity, a seventy-five percent ownership, and a deal. And then we just vetted the deal, made sure that it was working, that it was in the right location. Mm -hmm. It had the right, wrong problems. It suffered from bad management mm -hmm. and um, really just deferred maintenance. There was not, there was things that were really bad at the property, uh, not upkept. Okay, so were and you so in, I, were you in Arizona at the time? So were you living in Arizona? Yeah. Okay, so you're living in Arizona. Yeah. Now, where was the property, or is the property, or was the property? In South South Carolina. So South Carolina, all the way on the other side of the world. That, that's weird. So, okay, so you you go, you, you raise capital, you're in Arizona, and and you went to some brokers, I take it or whatever, and said, hey, I've got private money. Next thing you know, they're pitching you deals in South Carolina? Yeah, I was at actually a, a, another guru's event, right, where there was people looking, and uh, David Lindell would be my mentor, and yep. he, he was at an event, and um, there was just a bunch of people in the room, and I just said, man, I'm just going to tell them I got lots of money and see if I can... Uh, Find someone that's already found a deal because I really wanted to do a, do a deal. I just didn't, I hadn't found one yet, gotcha. and I thought this might be a simpler simpler way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so we we really did vet the deal and make sure that it was the right deal. I mean, it had um, it had the right bones. It was built in the 1970s, but it was all brick construction. Gotcha. Um, and it had nice floor plans, and it was big, and it had a nice little setup, and it was in the right. It was like three miles from like the Lowe's, all the new stuff. So okay, it was like so, set up in the right spot. So how many units? 144. 144. Now, would you consider it a class C or a class B or? It, it would be considered a class C property, probably at a C minus because of the deferred maintenance. Gotcha. Um, be, meaning that it was, you know, it had, didn't have laundry, uh, la laundry hookups in the units. You had to go to our uh, laundry mat that we already had in house. And, uh -huh. um, there just wasn't a lot of stuff, extra money. It's just a basic, we call it workforce housing now. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I termed it. Right. Uh, it's not section eight, but it's workforce housing. Workforce housing. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. so and 100, then, 140 units, and then, um, so the, so basically you vetted the deal, 75% ownership, so we're going to go in and, take, and, and basically purchase it. You had the money that you raised behind you 
to acquire the property. And we, we can get in the financing when you're at the event, when it comes to either a loan or, or raising debt and capital yep. and stuff like that. Um, but you ended up acquiring it and then you owned it. But, you know, what was that process of acquiring it? Was it, you know, do, how much capital did you have to have in? Was it, a, was it, a, a, you know, was it all raised capital? Was it debt financing? What, what was that? It was a combination of debt, a loan from the bank, right? Mm -hmm. And all the capital we needed, plus all the money that we needed for rehab. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, at $1.4 million. Uh, it ended up being 1.6 total. Mm -hmm. $1.6 million is what I raised in private capital mm -hmm. to do that deal. So, I mean, and, so a lot of people listening right now, that, that is a massive obstacle, 1.6 million. Um, for them to go, oh, wait, I got to raise 1.6 million in this particular case. I can't do that. Um, right. you know, uh, you know, how could you give them assurance that they could do it? Maybe not assurance or give them, you know, take that kind of, kind of, kind of deflate that barrier. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, so it's really, believe it or not, it's simpler than you think. And it really for you and wholesalers or guys that are fixing and flipping, you can start raising capital now. What you do is you start getting people to raise their hand. Mm -hmm. So that's what I got really good at is, is I got a lot of people excited about what I was doing and, and pitching the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really go after a deal until I felt like I had enough hands up in the air saying, listen, Corey, if you find a deal like that, I'm interested. Gotcha. And, and so by doing that, and it's really not that hard. I mean, it sounds hard. It sounds hard but i'm telling you it's but really not but if you not. got the deal if you got the deal though and it's a good deal and it looks good and it's good on paper and it makes sense then there's so much money out there that is looking for good deals and a good operator you can put them together yes yeah yes and you know and i was a new operator but i found a great seasoned management company mm -hmm. to do the operations and so that's why i could do a deal here in phoenix when the property's in south carolina Gotcha. And I realized that I don't have to be great at very many things, but as long as I'm good at talking to people and talking about money and capital and then assembling the right team, man, I can do deals anywhere. Right. And so then I don't even look in locations. I just look for the deal. Mm -hmm. The deal is what's more important, not so much so, so, where so, it's at as where I'm related. So you don't care where it's at. So it could be it could be in uh, South Dakota. It could be in North Carolina, South Carolina. It could be. It could be in Memphis. Absolutely. It could be all over. So the deal has to make sense, but it doesn't matter on the location. So you can go anywhere. Yeah, pretty that's, much. Yep. That that's pretty cool. So so now um, the Barry becomes because you were this was a new. You've never done an apartment complex before. How did you kind of deflect the whole question of experience? Um, well, I remember I was the 75% owner of this deal mm -hmm. and there was two other guys that one had a little bit of experience. Gotcha. And so that's, we used him kind of as the experience piece and, um, very quickly I ended up buying both these guys out. So I, I actually owned a hundred percent of the deal with it, probably two months of closing. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's a whole nother story. Know thy partner, know the operating agreement. But, um, the basic is, is, you know, if you don't have something, find someone that can find a, a sponsor and it would be easy to give someone 10% of a deal to say, listen, I need your capital in which you represent all your experience behind me. Just be in the deal with me. Gotcha. And so it's all about structuring, you know, the right, the right deal and so, the right people to come in and, and partner with you. Yeah. And what it sounds like, yeah. I mean, for you, you had the attitude of there is no obstacle I can't overcome. So if I don't have the experience, I'll find someone with the experience. I'll put someone in the deal. If I can't find the capital, I'll find the deal that will attract the capital that will come in. That that's I mean, that's a great attitude yeah. going in and make it work yeah. no matter what. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was tired of, of the hustle and grind, man. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew that I and the truth is, I had all this capital behind me, Sean, and I knew that that was my golden ticket. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if I could find a way to make some money, and, 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 and be consistent with it, man, that would lead me to the best thing ever, which is cash flow for me. Yeah. And we started doing this deal. And I mean, that's exactly how it worked out. We, we just started renovating it and doing all the things and fixing it up. Mm -hmm. And then over a course of five years, Sean, mm -hmm. can I, can I give the ending of this? We yeah. Talk about what I sold it for? Yeah. Yeah. 
I sold it for $8.8 million. I bought it for 3.2. Uh-huh. I sold it for $8.8 million. Million. It, it, and, you know what? That is, that is an unbelievable, amazing, life-changing, life-altering, you know, crazy story. But you know what the exciting thing is, too, about this whole thing? It's not like you purchased it and you had to dump money into the thing for five years, but you had right. cash flow for five years and you turned around and made the huge check. Boom. So what were you making <laughs> annually? What do you think you're making annually on the property? I was probably making um, $30,000 a quarter, so $120,000 a year. So um, you know, after billion, year two. $120,000, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. and so uh, $30,000 a quarter. And uh, we pay ourselves quarterly. That's how I think about my paychecks. Right? I get paid yeah. quarterly. But now here's what's crazy is when we sell this deal, we're doing a 1031 exchange. And the next deal that I'm buying is going to pay me roughly, I think, $320,000 a year for like the rest of my life. Or at least until I sell the asset. Until you sell it for another three or four or five and parlay it into something different. <laughs> yeah, it's find another bigger deal, right? So like that's a, it's a $15 million student housing project. And – um. We're going to 1031 exchange it. And I mean, life is good at that point. Right. Like I have no worries, but the truth is I love what I do. Yeah. And um, we've got like three or four other properties somewhere in that, in that mix. And um, I call it the cash flow life, Sean. And I'm telling you, like, I'm so thankful that I got on that. I only wish I could buy, I would have bought more in 2011. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, so, so you, you got people that are watching right now, you know, and you, you're, you're basically, you're on, on this path of wholesaling. So, or even fixing and flipping. So you're, you're searching for properties. you got deals coming on, you got income coming in, you're fixing, you're cutting the checks, going to the rehab properties and doing all that stuff. How do you all of a sudden basically pivot to where you stop doing this, right? And you start doing, start doing this. What was that pivot like? The pivot was actually hard at first in the beginning in my mind. I knew I needed to, but it wasn't until I really started having a hard time finding new deals that I it ultimately just said, there's, there's no other choice, Corey. Like the deals, are, finding how deals are getting harder and harder. And remember, all I knew how to do was go on the MLS. Right. So I was spending hours on the MLS trying to find a deal. And um, I was getting really frustrated. And yeah. at the same time, I've got all my capital saying, Corey, do something, do something. So, you know, for me, it was like, okay, listen, I'm going to concentrate. I'm going to focus. It took me a whole year, Sean, to like really learn the whole business of multifamily before I felt comfortable enough to go out and buy. Right. right? So I started 2010 and by 2011, I felt like I was, I was ready. Gotcha. And then once I was ready, I just went out and did it. I just, I made up my mind and said, I'm going to start attracting what I need. Right. So then you kind of put it yeah. out there. I've got money. I've got, de- you know, yep. and, and you started, you started just trying to talk to the right people to get the deals coming in. And we'll talk yep. about, uh, we'll talk about at the event, you know, specifically how you find deals and what, what's working right now in finding deals to kind of give people an yeah. idea and stuff. And raise it's a very money. simple process. It really is. Believe it or not, this sounds really complicated, but my life is not complicated. It's very simple. Um, I've put the right people in place mm-hmm. and created the right teams and then really it's easy to find deals uh, deal, get deal flow, and then uh, it's believe it or not, it's fairly easy to start getting capital. A lot of people think private money is like this five letter word or something that's really bad, but it's not. Right. Um, it's it's a lot more easier than most people think. It's just how you, it's really it's the six inches between your ears that screw you up. Yeah. And once you get that out of your system, because like when I raised my first piece of private money. Remember, I was a poor farm boy. I, I never thought, we never talked about money at the table. And so I had a, it was a limiting belief for me that I could even do it. And I did it by accident and I, 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 I got money. People, this guy gave me $85,000 and I didn't even really ask him. But I felt like Clark Kent going into the telephone booth. And when I came out, it was like, <laughs> I raised private money. <laughs> It was Superman coming out, and once I realized that, dude, this guy just gave me his money, I started to research and understand like, exactly the process that went went down, and then how to re- replicate it. And that's all I've done is replicate the process. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So now, talk about. I mean, real quick. Um, 
are you are you acquiring? You got this one. You're 1031 exchanging into a student housing project. It's a lot bigger. Um, have you done other deals? Is it something that's duplicatable, or is this like a one yeah. one one time wonder type of deal, or what do you think? Oh no, no, wow, and that's all I do. I mean, my whole life, I still have a wholesale business uh, in San Antonio. Uh, it runs pretty much by itself. We've got it automated, but our main goal is we're we're looking to buy three or four apartment deals a year. So we bought one in New Orleans uh, last October. Mm -hmm. um, we've been we've almost had a couple deals under contract this year. And not being able to do it, but we've we are we have one under contract right now. This is my 1031 exchange. Yeah. We have another one that we're probably going to have. Uh, we already have a signed LOI. Um, it's a matter of us getting our PSA, all the lawyers to like be happy with the contract, contract right. which we're in about a by three or four days away. That's a five million dollar deal. Mm -hmm. um, so it's about a one point seven million dollar raise, mm -hmm. and um, and then we have another fifteen million dollar deal that um we've got queued up behind it so so that's cool so you've got you got, you got stuff in the pipeline you're looking at deals and it's not like you're doing a hundred deals a year you know which trades no. it, it um, takes a, a ton of work and a ton of operation you only need to get a couple two three deals a year and if they produce fifty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars of income you know you can build a great income plus also too you can get the lift of you yeah. know of holding on to and you get the tax benefit of it right yeah. Oh gosh, that's the beautiful thing about it. That's the beautiful thing about it is because I'm now I'm true, uh, truly an investor, and I get to play the investor game like Robert Kiyosaki talked about, which is depreciation. Yeah. And so we do cost segregation studies on all our properties where we fast forward a lot of our depreciation yeah. that offsets a lot of my income. And so, like, that's a great thing. And and the other part of that too is we, I, you know, I I missed I used to miss the. Um, Fixed and flip profits, you know, for making a big deal. Yeah. Well, I get that with the apartment deals too. Um, we get like a, a two to two to four percent acquisition fee. Yeah. So, like on a fifteen million dollar deal, times uh, actually we're getting a three percent on that one. That's four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, Sean. Yeah. I'm gonna make when I close the deal. When I close. So that that's that's the, that's the four hundred and fifty thousand dollar. Not a flip. It's a acquisition fee that you get paid. Plus, you get the cash flow. Plus, you get the equity of the you know the future flip potential down the road, whatever that might be. That's like the trifecta. <laughs> it's the tri. It is the. It's la. It's it's the, it's the trifecta. It's the hat trick. It's the it's the, it's the whole deal, man. Yeah, it's man. Double so triple. that and that's why that's why I made the change. Like to the cash flow life. I, I just really, it's been. It's a journey, dude. It's been like the journey that like the gift keeps on giving, and now I just want to share it. I want to share it. Yeah. Exactly. So we are excited to have you speak at Extreme Freedom. Everyone that's watching right now, you've got to hear the entire story in detail. He's going to share every facet. One thing I love about Corey is he does not hold anything back. He's going to pretty much lay it on the table. He's like an open book, which is phenomenal. Um, and uh, I really appreciate that about him. And this story is phenomenal. I know it will inspire a ton of people to get out of their head, get out of their own way, and, and show the vision of that you can transform from a job to a wholesaler and then transform to something like this to where now you can still do wholesaling. You still got a wholesale business, but then transform sure. to something where you have a, a massive cash flow, depreciation, and, uh, and, and make huge profits. So Legacy wealth, legacy Sean. Wealth, it's right. legacy wealth. It's the wealth. I mean, what you teach is exactly where – I mean, I started, and, and it's like the growth of, I can, take that wholesale profit, take what you know, you're already a real estate professional, and get some of that long-term stuff, too. Like, yeah. don't forget about it. Yeah. That's what we talk about at the end of the game. You start here, you build your way through here, you get the cash stick, you, you raise private money, you invest it in these type of projects and stuff to give you the long-term cash flow. And, and see, and yeah. what's great is that you're living proof that someone that has done it is doing it. And, uh, and can share that story with everybody. So I'm pumped for you. So guys, if you're watching right now, go register for Extreme Freedom. You do not want to miss this presentation. No. It's going to be one of the best of the entire weekend. I am excited to sit down and take notes. And uh, he, Corey has a ton of energy. He's going to basically, he's got a cool book. He's, uh, he's I'm going to bring some copies there for some people. So you definitely want to go there and check him out. So register now on this page. I think there's a link below this video right here. So uh, I'm pumped, dude. Me too, brother. Can't wait. It's going to be fun. Thanks, man. Appreciate your time. Thanks, brother. See you soon.